So lesson five is about formulas. You can read the text here on the screen. The most important thing to pick up here is this little note on the right side of the screen. It says, Power Apps formulas are declarative, meaning they instruct a control to listen to changes in other controls. Here we tell the value field to look out for slider values, just like in Excel. So you may or may not be uh, familiar with Excel, uh, doing things in Excel. Uh, myself as a programmer, typically us developers, we're used to procedural driven. So if something happens, we make something happen, and then later on we could change something back. However, in Excel and Power Apps, it's declarative, which means here are two sliders, okay? And as you follow the instructions here, they want us to go into, this is a label. So if we click on the control, go up to the upper right corner, we'll see that it is a label. And they want to teach us about this formula bar, this expression bar here at the top. Um, you could call this the coding window. If there's any code in your application, you're going to be going back to this window to add the code in here. And if you need more space, you can make it larger. I like to make it larger and then just collapse expand and collapse from there with this uh, chevron in the upper right corner. So we're going to get very familiar with this on this particular lesson. We're going to add an expression here that's going to reference the values of these two slider controls here in the middle of the screen. No matter how they change, how many times they change, the expression that we tie to the text value of this label will constantly change. As it says over on the right side, it's going to listen to the changes in the other controls. So let's talk a little bit about controls in general. So they named this slider here price, just the word price, which I don't recommend. Whenever you name your controls, I would highly recommend that you give it a prefix. So for example, for this price for a slider, I would say SLD, okay, and then there's quantity. I recommend just clicking on the name and then you can go in here and SLD slider. For labels, I wouldn't call it total, I would call it LBL. LBL would be short for label. And when you do that, it's obvious when you when you create some code or an expression up here in the expression bar that when you're looking for a slider, so we click on this, we can either go find text in this drop down or go or just click on the word of text over here. That's what I typically do. I think it's the fastest. So Here's the expression. Right now it just has a, a literal uh, zero value there, okay, for the text. So if you want to reference a slider uh, in your application somewhere and get the value of it, all you have to do now, since we've named our controls, our, our slider controls, the SLD, we'll see a list of all of our sliders here. Isn't that neat? So that's what I recommend doing. So the first one is price. The very first item is the one that I want. So I'm going to hit tab and it's going to type that in there for me. And they want us to take the price, but in order to get at the value of the control. So right now we just typed in, we have the name of the control in the expression bar, but we're not referencing the value yet. So we have to do dot and you'll see all the properties when you hit dot and then IntelliSense here listed below. Value is what we're trying to get at. If you look in the right pane here, it's telling us price.value multiplied by quantity.value. So we need to, the value is the, the one we're looking for. So I'm going to hit tab. We're going to use the star or the asterisk or the multiplication uh, operator. And now we'll reference the quantity slider. So SLD. I didn't type that right. SLD. Quantity. Now you notice quantity isn't the first one. It's the one that we want but it almost looks like it's selected because probably because my, my cursor's over it. Instead of hitting tab, tab will always give you the first one, but if you select the one that you want, you just hit enter and it should give you that. Typically it does. SLD. If you were to use the down arrow, arrow and hit enter, there you go. So SLD quantity, that's the control itself. So if you want to get at the value of it, and something you should also notice in the middle of the screen, these controls are selected in green and purple. So it's it's trying to show you, it's trying to help you see what it is in your expression up here in the, the coding window that we're looking at here, what it's referencing. Okay, so you notice SLD price is highlighted in green. And the SLD quantity is highlighted in pink or purple. So it's sort of a helpful thing within Power Apps. So I'm going to reference the value property. Now, different controls have different properties. So if I'm trying to get at the text in a label or a text box, it wouldn't be value. It would be like dot text. Okay. But sliders have dot values, check boxes, toggle buttons, they have values. So the more that you work with all the different types of controls, you'll get to learn what are the main properties you want to get at because value is what we're trying to get at is the top most value and hit tab there we go now look at that 
So we got 500 and uh, we just don't want to click on next. Now let's, let's play around with this. So you notice as it changes, it's going to automatically update this label. Did you know this is a part of a 20 part series which goes over all the basics of Power Apps? And if you liked this video, chances are you'll want to check out the other parts as well. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can get dense six months of Power App struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power App Deep Dive Masterclass.